Hey guys, welcome back. I uh, know it's been a while. Um, we are getting ready to go into talking about PN junctions and uh, about abrupt changes in doping in semiconductors, which is going to lay the basis for some pretty important stuff uh, that we're going to get into in the future, such as uh, uh, MOSFETs, uh, BJTs, uh, you know, PN diodes, uh, stuff like that. And uh, before we get into uh, PN junctions, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the effects of an abrupt change of doping in a semiconductor and uh, something called the Debye length, which is a result of that. Um, the Debye length is very important in PN junctions. Uh, more importantly, I think it's um, important in MOS transistors and in MOSFETs. Um, and uh, it's not a parameter that has a whole lot of application, but explains some stuff that we'll see later on uh, that, uh, that otherwise would make sense. So. Um, we're going to start with some uh, semiconductor that, that is doped with some, you know, ND1. And at some uh, point X, uh, it goes into this ch abrupt change of doping to ND1 plus delta ND, right? And um, so we can use the Poisson equation in, uh, in this instance, uh, which is, in this case, uh, D squared V over DX squared is equal to the negative charge Q over the um, permittivity of the material, which is in this case is silicon, uh, times our uh, net charges in there, which is going to be uh, the positive charges uh, minus the negative charges. In this case, our positive charges are our ionized donors. Uh, we assume 100% ionization and uh, non-degenerately dose semiconductor. And that's going to be uh, you know, ND of X plus oops, uh, minus uh, our electron concentration, because we assume there's, there's no acceptor concentration. Since we have uh, high donor, we have high enough donor doping such that uh, our hole concentration goes to zero. So we just consider uh, holes, uh, I mean number of electrons, which is Ni exponential uh, E F minus E I over K T. Right, where's the Poisson equation? But uh, what we want to do is we want to write this in terms of uh, change in potential. Um, which is delta phi i, right? And, uh, or phi i, I should say. And phi i, uh, phi i, so potential, is equal to, you know, phi i naught plus delta phi i, right? Anytime we have a change in doping, we're going to have a change in electric field, we're going to have an internal electric field and some, uh, some potential that's going to change, you know, end of delta and potential, right? Um, so let's uh, let's change these terms up a little bit here. Uh, let's look at this right here. So um, what I want to do instead of writing this in terms of energy, I'm going to write this in ter terms of a uh, potential, right? And uh, we remember from before that E is equal to negative Q5, right? This is the kinetic energy of an electron, which is what our energy band diagrams are always drawn as. They're drawn as the kinetic energy of the electron in the conduction band, Bale's band so on and so forth, right? So um, we can rewrite this term here into Ni exponential. It's going to write um, Q phi I minus phi F over KT, right? Just like that. So this is equal to this term right here, right? So that's what we're going to rewrite this as, right? This should make sense from here, you know, electromagnetics. So uh, we're, we're assuming DC bias, so we're really well, we're assuming no bias. This is all built-in stuff. So, um, you know, we're not, you don't have to, you know, do this in terms of derivatives. So uh, then we're going to change, you know, this phi i to this right here. And that, that uh, this, you know, this is just n. n is now, and this is equal to, Sorry, n. Well, that is now equal to n i exponential. Uh, phi i is now this. Phi i naught minus phi f, right, over k t, right, times exponential delta phi i times Q over KT. Okay, just take that in for a minute. What I did is I replaced phi I with this term right here, you know, 
I you know combined phi and out phi f here, and then I separated delta phi i uh, to that right there. Right. So take that in for a second. Right. Let's go over here. Okay. Uh, what else can we rewrite here? Well, we can rewrite n d of x. You know, n d is changing as a function of x, but we're going to rewrite n d of x equal to n d one plus delta n d, right? Just like that. We could also write these as functions of x, but to save space and time, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Um, okay, so let's. Oh, and also, and this phi, uh, you know, this is actually phi i, right? Our uh, intrinsic potential, you know, is equal to this term right here. So the second derivative of this term, right, and this is constant. So when you take the derivative of this term, your constant goes away. And what we get here is d squared phi i over dx squared is equal to d squared delta phi i over dx squared, which is equal to negative e over, I'm sorry, q over e s i. And then nd becomes this, nd1 plus delta nd, right? Minus this right here. But you know what I'm going to do here? I'm going to change this term right here into its, uh, it's the second order Taylor series expansion, right? Uh, before I do that, oh, by the way, the second order Taylor series expansion, just as a side note right here, um, exponential delta phi i q over kt, Taylor series expansion on that is just going to be 1 plus q over kt delta phi i. Well, you can see that. That's our Taylor series expansion. Right? Okay. One plus that right there. Right? So, same thing this here. Well, this whole term here is just n in uh, this region right here which is just nd1, right? Just nd1, right? So this whole thing becomes nd1. Right? So I have plus nd1, right? Times this one plus q over kt delta phi i. Make sure you can see that okay. Just like that. There it is. All right. So, uh, I'm going to rewrite some things here. Um, let me make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, this is Q. Okay. Oh, this is supposed to be minus. That, that makes a little more sense now. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's minus, right? Because it's a minus here. Oh, and that's not divided by n, this, this whole term is n, right? Which is equal to this, which is equal to this whole term, which is equal to this whole term right here. Okay. So, um, well, that cancels out, that cancels out. Uh, I can bring this whole term over here, and I have d squared uh, delta phi i over dx squared is equal to, I'm just going to bring this over here, for to a negative q squared n d1 over k t e s i, permittivity of silicon, right there, delta phi i, which is equal to q over e s i delta and d, right? This is a constant right here, right? And uh, what I want to do is I want to solve delta phi i, uh, solve this second order uh, non-homogeneous differential equation uh, in terms of phi i. And, and you can rewrite, you know, this whole term here is a constant, 
right? So phi i is our, is our uh, you know, is, is what we're trying to solve for here, right? And this whole thing is in the term, is in the form of y double prime minus one over k squared y equals some constant called c, right? And we know that the uh, the um, you know, particular particular solution or the general solution of this is you know y is proportional to some exponential to the negative. I'm sorry, x over k, right? That's right there. So what is k in this case? Well, k if we were to solve in terms of phi i, is equal to the square root of k t e s i over q squared and v one. So this we call our Debye length, right? Because delta phi i is proportional to some, um, you know, we'll call it uh, a exponential to the negative x over L D. Right? So, as we go, as x increases and uh, uh, large uh, increases and goes into the bulk of this new doping, then uh, our uh, potential goes to zero, right? Or our change in potential, our change in potential goes to zero, right? Delta, delta phi i. So, uh, what we learned here is that. Uh, this uh, this you know LD the by length actually acts as like a um, as like a, a dielectric a region that behaves very much like a dielectric you know meaning no no free carriers no free charge you know because there is a small depletion region right here and and what ends up happening I'm just gonna erase this right here when we have this abrupt change in doping now we're at equilibrium so Fermi level stays constant right. We have some ND drop into some other ND like this. Or we drop in our, uh, our band structure drops, right? So we're, we're N type over here, and we're highly N type over here, you know? And uh, you know, the question should be asking why doesn't it just go from here and then drop down like that? Well, it's because of the divide length, it's because of this. Uh, mini depletion region. This this mini area, this very small area, this distance right here, where it's completely depleted of free carriers. Right? And uh, we'll see this when we get into PN junctions. Uh, you know, you're gonna have a large depletion region, but the edge of each depletion region is a is an L D, is a drop in in, uh, in L D. And but it's it's significantly small enough we can leave it out for PN junctions. But it's important to understand uh, where L D comes from. Uh, the um, official uh, definition for the Debye length, uh, this is from uh, a book written by a, a UCSD professor. Uh, it's the distance over which the free carriers rearrange themselves to shield the rest of the sample from a local electric field. Yeah, so we say it's the distance over which free carriers rearrange themselves to shield the rest of the sample from a local, local electric field. It's more of like a, a material science definition from it. Uh, another definition, uh, which more, you know, I think more relates to what we just did, is it's uh, the uh, distance over which a semiconductor band structure responds to abrupt changes in doping, right? Um, going back to the first example, let's say you, you know, you uh, dope a, a semiconductor uh, with uh, the phosphorus, which is a donor, right? So, uh, you know, you have, Silicon lattice like this, silicon atoms, silicon atoms, right? Let's say this is the uh, abrupt change of doping starts here, and then we have all these phosphorus atoms, right? Which are, are bonded to the silicon atoms, but also have this uh, electron right here, which is weakly attracted to the phosphorus atom by this, uh, you know, this electrostatic uh, attraction, or this um, van der Waals forces, I think is what it's called. And, but at the same time, the electron wants to move from this area of high concentration to low concentration here. So with this, there's this battle between the force between the atom and the electron and the force of diffusion, if, it's not really a force, but the, the need to, diff, to diffuse over to the, uh, the low concentration region. And the result in this is, uh, gives rise to the Debye length, which is like a, 
which is a dielectric like region because it's depleted of free carriers and that results in this uh, change in our band structure right here. So um, that's pretty much all we're going to talk about the bilink. Next lecture, we're finally going to get into PN junctions. Uh, probably something we should have got into a, a while ago. But uh, I hope this was useful. Uh, the bilink, we'll see more of this when we get into MOS devices and, and CV curves. So uh, that's it for today. Thank you.